Syngenta Crop Protection Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. We're here with Helma Spicer today with the Agric Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Helma, there's been a lot of talk about uh, spraying your wheat and using the right nozzles. How important is using the right nozzles on your sprayer? Uh, for the application of Folicure and Proline and products of that, uh, of that family, uh, it's critical to use the right nozzles to get a good job done with that uh, particular fungicide. Um, we've done a fair bit of work at Ridgetown since uh, the year 2000 and evaluating different nozzles, different nozzle configurations, different nozzle orientations and we found a significant difference in how well uh, we cover those weed heads because what we need to do is provide protection of the weed heads and basically provide a panoramic coverage or all sides of all weed heads and some nozzles work better at that than others and uh, we'll show you some of those here uh, this morning. Okay, and uh, when you say all sides of the wheat head, why do we have to cover all sides of the wheat head? If we leave a, a side of the wheat head unprotected, then uh, that's open to infection, and uh, nozzles that typically point straight down, as we would use for the application of herbicides, tend to have less coverage on the leaving side of the wheat heads. In other words, as the sprayer goes past, uh, the approaching side gets good coverage, uh, the left and right side uh, not so bad, but the back side is really wanting for coverage. So we have to orient the nozzles so we uh, spray both from a forward and from backward direction to get good coverage. So Hama, what's the proper height for, for your boom to be set at when you're spraying follicure? If, we're using, if we're using something like the, the forward and backward nozzle, which is a, a system that we have uh, here in my hand, where we have a, a wide angle flat fan nozzle pointed uh, ahead and pointed back and climbed about 15 degrees down, we'd like to see that about 12 inches off the, uh, off the weed heads. As we go higher, uh, which uh, farmers tend to do to protect their investment, the sprayer, because the booms are getting wider and we're moving at, at considerable speed through the field, as we increase the height, or we go twice as high, two feet let's say, our coverage drops to about half. So critical that we stay in that 12 inch or less, uh, less range from the nozzles to the weed heads. How about nozzles? When you're when you're picking the right nozzle for your for your uh, sprayer, some people might just stick with the same nozzle they've been spraying all their herbicides. What uh, what different types of nozzles work best? The the testing that we've done since 2000 shows that a forward and backward uh, spray, be that with a double nozzle assembly like this, or a turbo flood jet nozzle alternating one for one backward, one forward, every 20 inches as we go across the boom, we're spraying more horizontally than we are vertically which means we're hitting the heads which are really oriented vertically, they're vertical targets. We're trying to spray them front and back and both sides. Uh, it, it's critical that we get a near hor or as close to horizontal as possible. In this case we're spraying about 15 degrees down from horizontal which is almost ideal. The turbo flood jet again gives us that 15 degree angle almost uh, perfectly. If we go to a, a standard flat fan design uh, it's all vertical, straight down, and uh, we really don't have a good chance of getting a, a hit uh, on uh, the front and back side of the thing. Uh, as we go to something like a, a double nozzle assembly, again we're getting more uh, downward inclination of that spray than horizontal and the coverage suffers. So what kind of economic impact can people, can people uh, expect if they're using the wrong nozzles? You're, you're basically paying the, whatever the rate is per acre for that product and you're, you're getting considerably less control. Uh, how that translates into dollars or bushels, uh, I'm not sure, but it, you're not getting the best performance out of that product to protect your wheat from uh, fusarium infection. When farmers uh, decide on a nozzle to use for the application of Folicure or Proline, uh, clearance uh, from the nozzle body down below the boom tends to be critical. Uh, something like this, the double nozzle assembly, it has some length to it and usually it, it kicks down below the boom and you're not hitting something. If you're using something like a uh, turbo flood jet nozzle, the ones that face back, there's no interference, it's clear. The ones that face forward usually end up hitting the uh, lower boom member and we've got a big splash, we've got an anvil. So you might have to use something like an extension to basically uh, extend the forward facing nozzles 
a little bit below so that they actually clear that lower lower member on the uh, on the boom. Cool. Question about water volume as far as uh, is needed for uh, the application of these particular fungicides. Uh, best information is follow the uh, product label. Uh, most of them are in the 20 gallon per acre water volume and you really don't want to exceed that. Uh, most producers are using uh, something below that in that 15, 17 gallon per acre range. 20 gallons per acre is really maximum. If you go beyond that, uh, you add enough moisture to the head that if there was uh, disease uh, spores present, uh, you could actually aggravate the situation. So 20 gallon per acre, maximum. All our testing uh, that we've done with nozzle coverage evaluations at Ridgetown were done at 20 gallons per acre. And the reason for that was the first year we did it was 20 gallons per acre. Then every subsequent year, we basically stayed at that water volume so that we could see how our results compared to what we had done in years past. Okay, and now how about wind? We're using the boom at a uh, fairly low level here. What kind of wind, uh, how much of an effect could wind have? In your we, did, uh, we did some testing at Ridgetown looking at the wind impacts on spray coverage with uh, things like Folicure with different nozzle configurations. When we had sort of winds in the ideal condition somewhere in that seven, eight mile per hour range, we had a certain level of coverage when we sprayed and the wind was basically double that in that uh, 14 to 16 mile per hour range, our coverage uh, was uh, cut almost in half.